grief, we must understand, it is on many different levels. Somebody close to them died somewhere, they will feel this because within their body there is a certain process. Because what we call as a parent is a basis of this body. There is a very deep memory connection between the two. Somebody, death means somebody was available to you, is absent. That's all. It is because that one, when life vanished, you are crying about it. It's just that somebody who was feeling a part of the collage for you is absent. So it leaves a hole in your life. Depending upon how close they were, accordingly, it will leave that big of a hole in your life. So what you are battling with is not the death of the person. What you are battling with that the size of the hole they have left in your life. Suppose the far away, far away relative or friend, somebody that you know or an acquaintance died, you feel bad for an hour and then you get back to normal. But somebody very close and dear to you passed away, now they left a huge hole. So your problem is you are trying to tend to this hole which is within yourself. This hole has happened. Essentially now what I say may sound little brutal for people who are in that situation but one must understand this. If you look for solace, yes, if somebody comes to me who have just lost somebody dear to them, I will also hug them and be compassionate to them, protect them, give them some solace. But you must decide whether you want solace or you want a solution to your life. Because today this person will die, tomorrow that person will die, day after tomorrow I may die myself. It doesn't matter. But people keep dying. Because we are dying kind of people. Let's understand this. All of us, we are dying kind of people. First thing that must be fixed in our mind. We are mortal by nature. How having said that, grief, we must understand. It is on many different levels. There is a psychological grief. In thought and emotion you suffer the loss of the person. But depending upon how much memory you have built within your body with regard to the person, let's say if it's your child or your husband or your wife or some kind of very close bond then a certain amount of memory is there in your body we call this traditionally in yoga is called runanu bandha runanu bandha that has body has developed a bond beyond your psychological friendship and companionship and love and whatever else you have body itself has done this a whole lot of people feel this Somebody close to them died somewhere. They have not received any information. Suddenly they feel their energies are gone. And you know they are like, they, they don't know what's happened. But suddenly they are almost sick. They are feeling like that. Completely drained out. Then after a few hours, after a few hours, few days, the information will come that this person is dead. But well before that information came, they will feel this. Because within the body, there is a certain process that the memory starts undoing itself and you feel like you are dumped. Your Ranabandha with your parents or with your children is strongest till you are 21 years of age. Once you cross 21 years of age, it's called as the first quarter in the yogic way of looking at it, 84 is a cycle of life. The first quarter is 21. Up to 21, if you lose a parent or if you lose a child below 21 years of age, the pain will not just be emotional, it will be physical. It will manifest in the body because there is a strong Runanabandha. But beyond 21, it is largely psychological and emotional. When we say Runanabandha, what we suffer emotionally or psychologically, that's not what we are talking about. We are talking about physical memories. Bodies have memories. Because what we call as a parent is the basis of this body. There is a very deep memory connection between the two that is at its strongest till 21 years of age. Once you pass that, it is weakened. 
Is it gone? Not totally gone, just weakened. Let us say you are 42 years of age and you are a man then you still have a reasonably painful Runanabandha. But let us say you are 42 years of age and you are a woman. Your Runanabandha is almost negligible. Not that it's not there, it's there but very very low. So the suffering that you go through is largely emotional and psychological. If you're psychologically very stable, emotionally balanced, you'll see you will handle it quite effortlessly because there is no physical turmoil going on in the system. But the same thing, if they lose their husband, that Runanibandha is physically painful because that is a different type of Runanibandha. A child below seven, seven and a half years of age doesn't have much Runanabandha. The mother and father may have enormous Runanabandha, but on the other side, there is not much Runanabandha. This is not just for psychological reason. A child below seven, seven and seven and a half years of age doesn't suffer much. Doesn't go through the turmoil physically. May suffer because of not being taken care of and you know those kind of situations if they are there I don't want to go into the detail mechanics of what it is but if you are over 42 years of age and you are a woman and you lost a parent this is why in this culture women are not required to do karmas in Indian culture I'm talking about karma is done for the dead not so much for you or me but if you are below 20 years of age it's very very important that you do it because it's both for the dead and for you is very important for you because the person who died who died whatever happens happens but ha your life can be in a constant turmoil because there is a physical memory which torments you at a different level even if you are mentally stable, emotionally very balanced, still there is a certain torment going on within you. For this, there are yogic processes with which you can rejuvenate the system. There is a whole system of things to do. Here at the different places, especially you follow traditional yoga, the where the physical memory can be taken away, the psychological suffering can be dealt with by the individual person much more easily how to perform karmas and kriyas for dead if you are not able to physically do something the simple thing is to go into a three-day sadhana because internally you can do this beyond a certain age it is largely for the dead that we are doing it but there is an element of that it's not totally gone our bodies are never 100% free from the genetic process that we have received from our parentage. There is a way to be about that, but we are not absolutely free. Physical body functions in a certain way. So, so just three days of withdrawal, a certain type of sadhana, if you don't know anything else, simply just to the Ma Mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, intensely for three days, as much as you can, a minimum of four and a half hours a day, if you do this, you don't have to be really bothered about that. Because it's also nice to withdraw, it's a sensitive time. But now deaths and funerals, and what happens post-death, it all becomes a social nonsense, that you have to have people at home, serve them drinks, serve them food, serve them cake. You know, in the Western countries, it became a big thing. Even in India, certain kind of things is being building up. It's best that you just withdraw from society and nonsense and bring some private time when somebody significant in your life passes away. It's important that you withdraw and do something with yourself rather than simply trying to run the social thing like a distraction. 
the social thing is people's way of handling their grief is let's go to the movie let's read a book let's watch television don't look for distractions when there are troubles within us we must address it head on don't look for distractions distraction is not a solution think about it